Brian Callen. We did it. We it did it, us, brother. We did it. it. I know. It took us about four months. It took us about to four months. Together. I'm always at your, your service. It, it's one of those things, but I'm psyched to be here. Please enjoy the um, abstract. The well, it's not so abstract. There's a painting behind me that I just I just took a charcoal pen to paper and I framed that for you so that the backdrop would look kind of like cool and obscure. That looks like a female form because I did have, you, I have, um, well, I'm very masculine. As you guys know, I'm very, very powerful. My masculinity is, is a little overwhelming. So if I have sort of a female uh, form behind me, it softens my edges. Does that make sense? Don't you do? Yeah. Do you prefer feminine art? I think I, I think it, it kind of balances the amount of yang energy. I have a lot of yang energy. I, 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 I burn hot. I got a, I got a fucking furnace in my belly. If you know what I mean, don't even need a winter coat. You know, all this, you know, yeah. You, are you big in Chinese medicine? Uh, I am Chinese medicine. My Chinese medicine is something called Kung Fu. Okay, dude. So dude, have you is. had, have you had acupuncture before? I actually have had acupuncture. And I what was think it like? It what what did you, you know, do? I had my 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 uh, neck would my I used to have this recurring injury. I think I got it from wrestling, and it would just it would always and I'd be doing some jujitsu and I would tweak it and I was I was done. And it, there's nothing more exhausting than having a really bad neck. And I finally, out of desperation, went to this acupuncturist. And when they stick needles in your neck and your back, it's disconcerting. You cannot move. You will not be moving when you've got all these needles in your in your back end but it i think it actually worked it actually released the muscle well how long so, were you needled i don't know like an hour it was like yeah. six of them or like 30 of them it was like 30 of them oh dang you know, i know and you were, just were, you were, think them in was it all in your neck or did they do like your groin and your your no, elbows no, no, and no, shit? No, no, thank you. And not in my feet, please. It was more in my, uh, it was my lower back and my neck. That's so scary when they put it in your neck. It's dude, like, dude, do me a favor. Don't hit the gel of my spinal cord, if you don't mind. I was I dating really this. Know the, let's be honest. We don't really know the practitioner, right? It's like he's recommended. You don't know what kind of schooling he's really had. There's so many charlatans out there, but you're just you're just basically rolling the dice. And then they could be dirty needles, honestly, to be honest. I don't Correct. know anything about it. Dude, I dated this girl that was, um, she was a veterinarian and she started doing animal, Chinese medicine on animals. And she was doing it. Yeah. And I was like, all right, I got to get it. Give it to me. Where do I need it? And she was like, right in that area between your nutsack and your asshole, that the taint. She's like, I want to put one right in that. And I was like, I no, need, no fucking way. No. no way. You're not but, getting in my taint. That ain't happening. I but, can barely have half a knuckle in my rump. Get, get, stay but, out of that area, please. But the thing is, I think she was right. Like, I think that if I could have overcome my fear and I got one, <laughs> that it would have done it would, like it transformed. It would have solved. It would have said you wouldn't have been so tight down there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But it opened yeah. up a little bit. Yeah, you. One thing about you, I noticed the way you walk. You're a little tight in the taint area. Yeah, I got to do some stretches. So, what are some good lower back like opening your chakra, your root chakra? I I actually cured my lower back. I used to have major problems with my lower back. I worked with Lauren Landau, who's the strength coach for the Denver Broncos, and he gave me several stretches for your back, which are strengthening exercises. But he deals with the best athletes in the world. If you want to learn, really, if you really want to learn how to how to deal with back problems and stuff. There's a, there's a website called Squat University that everyone I know who's a real, who, an actual athlete swears by. And then you go to an actual physical therapist who's an athlete themselves, and that's what you do. And they will show you there is a science. There is Your body is a mechanical machine in one aspect. And, and there are people that truly understand movement, mobility, and when you have impingements. And that's what you do. What's so. impi what are impingements? So you you may have like a you may have something in your your so a lot of times you'll have knee pain, right? And you're like, my knee hurts. I don't know why. And then you'll get a guy who really knows what's going on. They'll say, Where does it hurt? And then they'll have you roll out. You'll roll out the the T band on that side of the leg, or you'll roll out your calf, and for all of a sudden your your knee doesn't hurt. And you're like, that's a miracle. And they're like, no, it's not. It's just science. I know exactly what was happening. You had 
you something was tight and something was pulling on that ligament and that was then throwing this thing off and that thing off. There's another guy named Gray Cook and he works with uh, athletes and so you get these insane athletes that keep getting injured. And what they find is that you're weaker on one side or less flexible on one side than the other. Or you've got a really flexible hamstring but a really tight quad. And they can tell that, they, can, they know that when they have you either run, walk, um, move in a certain direction, they can see it. And, and, or they can even tell by the way you're, like, when you're walking, you wear down your shoes in one direction or another. And so when they do that, they go, oh, I got it. You're putting all your weight on this. Side. You have an imbalance. And they'll give you exercises and teach you what to do. So lower back, right? My lower back, I cure my lower back by making my glutes stronger and changing my quote unquote posterior tilt. It's all these little things that you're like, you know, but again, it's just a science. So, which is, why, like, which is why, which is why, yeah. What, what? What, what, did you become an athlete when you were like in high school or something or middle school? You know, I just always, I mean, an athlete's a, a strong word for me. But I, I know I can communicate with my body, and I did do sports, and I still do sports. But, you know, I got friends that are real athletes. I was just trying to – I was just standing in on at a plate while major league pitchers were throwing heat, and I was trying to get my bat on the ball. Okay? So I, I know the difference between me and a real athlete. But there, it's pretty cool to stand there and try to hit – off a major league pitcher as they're throwing changeups, curves, and fastballs. That's pretty cool. It's pretty fun. Yeah, you ever get hit by one of those? No, but I did. I did foul too. I, I fouled too, so that was good. But that's because I play a lot of tennis, so I was able to watch the ball a little better than most people. So. Where did you foul it to the left or to the right? Uh, to the right. Yeah, to the right. I, I, I don't have the bat speed. Let's be serious. I'm, I'm, these guys are just ridiculous. They're these Dominican, these beautiful athletes, these like six foot five, six four, just Dominican, um, you know, uh, specialists. They just, they, they're just like, it's what they've been doing their whole life. And they're ridiculous athletes. You know, it's just a whole different, it's a whole different level. If you think you're an athlete and you did well in high school, hang out with some pro athletes. Try to run sprints with NFL football players, which I've done. I looked like I was made of wood. I literally in the video looked like I was, it's like, why is Brian made of wood? Why does he, why is his, why are his bones wood attached uh, to, by cord? Because that's what I looked like. Dang. Thick, so wait, you, you did play like in high school with other high school kids and then yeah. in college, did you play in college? So college, I went to college to be a wrestler. And then I hurt my back, and then I got into kickboxing and uh, and taekwondo. But I but I, I competed all over in full contact taekwondo and and kickboxing a little bit. And then I boxed and uh, I did some jujitsu and stuff. So I, all it's like all 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 weekend warrior shit. You know, I have did, no business talking about it. Did you get then like going to acting and then kind of break through in the acting industry and then get, gained access to like no. famous athletes? No. I I always, no, I always just wanted to be, I always was fascinated with fighting. I love it. I love it. I still take, I still take, you know, jujitsu classes and MMA classes. It's hilarious. So did you, you end up meeting, like, did you like get to that level where you're hanging out with the Broncos through the entertainment industry or was it through the fighting? Oh yeah, Broncos? I guess so. Yeah. I guess when you're in, you know, like last night I did a show at here in Arizona and uh, I'm at the uh, desert Ridge improv and Henry Cejudo who was an Olympic gold medalist at wrestler and the UFC champ. He, he came to my show. Kelvin Gastelum came to my show. Uh, he's one of the best MMA fighters ever, I, in my opinion, one of the most impressive human beings. And then I had the Olympic gold medalist, uh, Helen Margulis, who uh, she won an Olympic gold in wrestling. Gorgeous, like this gorgeous woman. Um, and also like an Olympic gold medalist. And they're all in my green room. They all in my audience. Then they came backstage. And then, and then a bunch of other Olympians slash UFC fighters. And you're just in there like, you know, you're like, this is, this is astonishing. It was kind of cool. So, so yeah, I guess, you know, when you're a comedian, there are people that kind of like, you know, guess what? They like to laugh and it doesn't matter that they're a gold medalist. They want to come and watch your show. It's kind of flattering. Pretty cool. Do you think that more fighters come watch you because of your fighting experience? I think it's because I have a podcast that talks about fighting. Oh, yeah. And and I and I do it with Brandon, and maybe because I love the fight game, and maybe because, 
you know, I, I'm, I'm maybe one of the few actors that'll, you know, get in there and be silly enough to roll around sometimes or, you know, box and do things like that. So what do you think about um, what Sean Strickland was saying? I don't know if you saw him speaking out uh, like Bud Light sponsored UFC. And then Strickland was like, yeah, I'm going to use this opportunity to talk some shit. Or do you, you, what do you, I think Sean's a very passionate guy. And I think Sean, and I think that Sean is, is 50% serious. And, and, you know, I would say, could I just lose you? Yeah. Your okay. audio cut out I think while Sean's you're 50%. giving me the good stuff. Oh, I think, I think Sean's 50% serious and 50% showman. And um, and there's an audience when you go hard in the paint against Bud Light. There's also an audience when you go on a hard in the paint against the trans movement or whatever. So um, I think that's I think we're living in an age where you better pick a side because the money's on one side or the other. And and you you don't really make a whole lot of money with dialogue. You make a whole lot of money amplifying your monologue and making it very colorful. And he's a very colorful American. Um, I do think that if you're going to really get into these debates and you're really going to get into, you know, your political philosophy, you've got to that that's something you have to earn. That's something that takes a long time. And, uh, you know, uh, but there are a lot of Americans like Sean and like his audience that are fed up with with uh, being talked down to and being told what truth is by a small group of people that come from an area code most of us can't afford to live in uh, or i should say a zip code most of us can't afford to live in and uh and they have a very different reality they 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 grew up going to very elite schools they've never gone hungry they've never worked with their hands they don't know anybody who smokes they probably don't know anybody who's been in the military and so that's the divide and uh that and and that doesn't mean that 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 people like sean and other americans aren't just as smart as these elite hyper-educated people it, it does mean that they live a life where they pay a price for being wrong and a lot of people in the elite you know who are who are controlling the narrative whether they're in politics or certainly in the media don't pay a price for being wrong so i think sean was probably voicing that frustration it's one of the re reasons that people like him. when you're talking about controlling narrative like who do you think it is <laughs> See, I don't think it's a cabal of evil people. I think it's an ideology. And I think when you um, live a life that is rather sheltered or let's say walled off, and that you can blame on what? You can blame it on technology. You might be able to blame it on a system of uh, an economic system. There are a lot of things you can blame it on, but we do know there seems to be a divide. We, we do know that, that if you're talking to somebody who's got their master's in, um, psychology a master's in journalism a master's in even economics they are going to have a very different outlook than someone like you and i and what i mean by that is they're probably going to look at the mainstream media and see no problem here they're probably going to have a much higher regard for your average college professor who teaches the humanities they're probably going to um be a lot more uh trustful of our our health bureaucrats and they're going to listen to you to somebody when they say to mask up or get 10 vaccines. They're just going to listen to that. And the rest of us just kind of go, I don't know about this because you're also telling me that two plus two is 16. You're also telling me that a man and a woman is an inner feeling and that biological males should be allowed to be in every sport. The problem is, guys, you don't play sports. So you have no idea the kind of advantage of, and a biological man has in a sport like track and field, in a sport like boxing, in a sport like MMA, in a sport like wrestling, in a sport like um, you name it. Uh, and that's an issue. And so the rest of us go, why are you all of a sudden telling me this stuff is, 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 uh, is, is true in reality? It's not the reality I live. It's not the anybody I know has lived and it's not the reality my parents or my grandparents lived. And all of a sudden you're telling us I have to go along with this. Americans don't like that. I certainly don't. You think that so. it, you cut out a little there, but I think I got what you were saying that like, these people in the universities, is it because they're like indoctrination, you know, industrial indoctrination centers built by John Dewey and Rockefeller? They're like, yo, let's create some factory workers. And all these people have the brains no, of like. I don't think it's, no, I don't think it's that organized. This is where I differ with people. I don't think it's this. 
again, I don't think it's it's that organized. I think it's just it, it's what happens. It's just what happens. You've got a problem you want to solve. And what is that problem? We want good factory workers. Let's make our schools mimic the factory. But what happens is the world moves on. And you realize those schools are outdated. You realize that model is outdated. But there are too many people ensconced in that way of teaching. There are too many people ensconced in, 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 in doing things that way. So getting it to move on a grand scale takes a long time. There's a lot of resistance. People tend to want to stick to what's to the orthodoxy in anything. And and you're you're just going to have pushback no matter what. So I think that's more what it is. I really do. I'd love to be able to point to a bad guy. The frustrating thing about a lot of our problems is the bad guy isn't wearing a, you know, it doesn't have a cloak and dagger. The bad guy's <laughs> way more amorphous, man. It's way more amorphous. The bad guy doesn't wear a crazy outfit in Switzerland and talk like this. Exactly. What I listen, we are here's the bad guy. Nobody wants to like we all talk about this, that, and the other thing in the elites. The real issue is that we are um we have paid a real price, for example, to be safe from quote unquote terrorism. Remember when we gave up all our privacy, all of it to be safe? safe from al-Qaeda or someone like that after 9 Pretty much, yeah, we, the Patriot the Act, man. Yeah. We said to the government, you can put cameras everywhere, everywhere, including in our phones. And um, and, and that'll, at least I won't get blown up. And all of a sudden you realize, oh, I, I have zero privacy. And they have all my data, they. And by they, I don't know who I'm talking about, but you know what I mean? And all of a sudden, this is what we do in the name of convenience, in the name of safety, in the name of comfort. So we're to blame, too, man. You know, the machines are, do you think the machines are going to kill us? They've already won because they fuck us. The machines have already seduced us. Try putting your phone down sometime. Good luck. This is what I'm writing about with my stand-up. It's like I, I bought my kids the iPhone. I haven't seen them since. What do you, you do with it? How old are they now? 12 and 15. And, and you know, I, I can't compete with the Internet. I can give them my value system. But good luck. Good luck. Good luck fighting. Good luck fighting the tech nerds who have their own way of looking at the world because they're going to they're going to suggest video and ideology to my children that they believe in, not that I believe in. So how do you fight that? Let me ask you another question. How do you fight sentient AI? How do you fight the exponential growth of AI as AI starts making AI? I want to know. If you think your iPhone 15 is addictive, tell me how AI 1000 works on your brain. The, the only way I can think to fight AI is with an EMP blast. But if they figure out how to tap the vacuum for electricity, that thing's going to be solid state. Well, we, we are we are competing. You know, you've got what Microsoft coming up with an AI brain. You've got Google putting ten billion dollars into an AI brain. You've got all these different companies competing to get the best AI brain. Okay, we are competing and we are spiraling toward hell, not heaven. I think that's possible. And so you've got a bunch of transhumanists. And I'm quoting Tristan, Tristan Harris and uh, Reza uh, Roskin, Ezra Roskin, who are two guys who did the social dilemma. One guy invented the infinite scrolling. And they're saying they're saying we're getting calls from these people in these AI labs. And, and these people in these AI labs are saying, hey, we're creating stuff that we have no control over. And we don't know what to do. And oh, by the way, we're radical atheists anyway. So we just want to push the button to see what happens because we don't want to be specious. I'm quoting Larry Page. Larry Page, creator of the founder of Google, said to Elon Musk, don't be such a species. Don't be so worried about humanity. Oh, that's what we're dealing with. Oh, okay. That's what I'm wondering. Like, I don't think Larry Page is the villain, but is it just like, is it ignorance that creates these systems or the people that they live in these systems ignorantly and then other people take advantage of it? I th I'm getting some feedback through your phone. I think my voice is. Oh, is that right? I'm sorry. Let me 
me let me see if I can get on uh, the internet here because this is acceptable. Oh, okay. Problem with the uh, sound. So hold on, let me see. I'm so yes. Sorry. No problem, Brian Callum, ladies and gentlemen. Motherfucker was born from some dude that I think worked for the CIA. I don't know if that's true or not, but I'm definitely going to ask Brian when he gets back. Hey, questions in the chat. What do you got? I'm going to ask Brian some shit. What's the best question I've got? It's always funny to see this word in text. Unite and create for life says shaft. Big fan of that word shaft. Uh, here's one. Ian is all right. He is rich and has a good heart. LOL. Well, you know. Wealth is a state of mind, um, but I, I'm fortunate to have been decent with my finances over the course of my life. What do we have here? Some good advice from, oh, David Brown again, right at guy. What TV show? Here's a good one. What TV show is Brian on back in the day? Well, you know, he was on the Goldbergs. I don't know if uh, if that was back in. Oh, he's also on Mad TV. I think Brian got his his start on Mad TV. I was just reading that on on Wikipedia. Uh, why no more Crowder? That's a good question. That's Blaze T. Smith is wondering why no more Crowder. Uh, I'm going to be on Crowder. Oh, you are okay. What what is your what are you doing with Steven? Whoop! There's still some lag. Can you hear me now? Is this settling in? I think it's better. All right, because because now I'm on internet. I'm so sorry about that. No worries. Yeah, it was it was a bit choppy. I think it's better now. So what's up? What's what's your status with the Crowder show? I'm I'm going back. I'll be uh, I'll be there. I'll be on there twice this month. I'm excited. So because uh, they, you know, I think for the for the new Sweet. year they, they were doing their thing. So. Oh okay. Yeah. Do you work officially with the, his show, or do you just go in and do guest spots? Yeah, I just go in and do guest spots. My my podcast off limits. Um, I have, I put one episode behind the paywall, the Mug Club paywall, and the other episodes on YouTube for everybody. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. And then I third chair. I come into Dallas and I third chair periodically. So you just fun. live in Cali and then you bounce to wherever when you work? Yes, sir. So you think it's more these systems of control are like, um, I guess you would say they're they're appearing naturally and then people are taking advantage of them rather than people trying to like Klaus Schwab, for instance, obviously opportunistically attempting to morph the liberal economic order into a new world order. He talks about it plaintively. He said libertarianism is a problem, but is he just taking advantage of this mess, this tech mess or whatever? So, this so, mess? so, so good example. So this is a guy who believes in top down control. This is a guy who believes that the individual doesn't know as much as the philosopher kings. This is a guy who has spent his time in elite circles, so it's impossible not to think you're smarter than the quote-unquote flyover states, the people that listen to sports radio, the people that make this country run on time. That's the deal. And as far as like people who are coming up with these AI brains, what are they really doing? They have the hubris the arrogance to think that they can invent their own God. And that is what they're doing. And you better be careful when human beings try to create their own gods. It doesn't seem to work out. I don't know of an ancient mythology or religion that doesn't warn against that kind of arrogance. But it is so human to think that you can solve all problems, including death. See Ray Kurzweil and the, you know, and his book, The Singularity is Near. Do you get, uh, or do you get into that Harvard stuff with David Sinclair, all that life extension stuff, nicotinamide, mononucleotide, any of that? Not really. No, I don't think it's there yet. I don't, the technology is not there despite what people are selling. And when it is there, maybe I'll do it. But I also have a problem with trying to live forever. I think that's also, uh, kind of a monkey's paw i'm not i'm not i'm not a i'm not a fan i want to i want to i want to i want to die i want to i want to squeeze i want to wring the sponge and then die i want to i want to have a youthful body like 30 40 year old body for 200 years but not like i don't want to i don't want to like force myself to live that long i'd like to kill myself when i'm ready but like <laughs> i want to have a healthy body up until i'm done yeah, me too. That's why I work out. That's why I eat well, all that shit. You know, that's 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 kind of what I want to do. But, uh, you know, as far, apart from exercise and telling the truth 
and eating reasonably and moderately and going to the doctor and sunshine. You know, there are I, supplements work. Pharmacology does work. It what really do you does. use? What are your main supplements? You know, I, I'm lucky because I, I have access to a bunch of scientists. I've done all the, you know, all the blood work. I've had all the scans. And and so I'll get, you know, so I, I use this a good multivitamin. I use um, uh, omega-3s with Coke 10. I use uh, some vitamin D. And that's it. No testosterone, no peptides, um, none of that. I haven't needed it yet. So When you say a good a good multivitamin, what is that? Thorn. Thorn's a great company. And it's got their two-a-day basic nutrients, and it's really, really good. Um, and I think magnesium at night's probably good. Yeah, yeah, magnesium, dude. That shit's magical, dude. It's at the center of every chlorophyll molecule is one magnesium atom. It, it's it's like the reason I find if you get a lot of sun and you're going to burn, don't eat yeah. acidic food, don't eat sugar, don't eat meat, eat green vegetable, because that magnesium is going to make you tan, and your skin won't burn. It'll tan instead. Really? Shit's pout. Right. Yeah. That's what anecdotally, that's what I've experienced. Well, you're probably a little bit floored at the gloss and the youthful, the youthful sheen on my skin. Right. Yeah, I've been noticing it the whole show. Thank you. It's, I know it's hard. It's distracting because it's uh it's got the consistency of a tulip's petal. It's sort of a glaze. Yeah, I know. It's kind of like the finest English leather. It's got a patina to it. So, I sort uh, of you're, so your your viewers are welcome. I'm getting sort of a shimmering glow uh, from your end. Yeah, I apologize for that. So, what do you? Where are you? Where are you? You're at the. Uh, a ba you work with baseball players. Yeah, I'm. 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 I'm at this gym, this state of the art gym, and um, I'm going to get a workout in with a bunch of elite athletes. This is like post show. You're just in town, so. You yeah, it's also because I'm. I'm. I'm probably twenty percent gay. And I like watching, I like, I like being around super athletes so I can like look at their muscles and kind of covet, covet their forms. Not does so it, much to have sex with, but I just want to look like them and then does, maybe have sex with myself. Does it make you stronger? No, probably not. I, I'm just not, I don't have the bone structure. I'm, 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 I'm fairly coordinated, but I, I'll never have the body. I'll never be happy because I don't have the kind of body that one um that one catches their breath when when viewing right but Nate, i want but, to kind of i want to take my shirt off Ian, and i want you to go jesus christ mm -hmm, but, but I now don't have that. i just I don't start g like cut myself off halfway yeah, into yeah. the first word yeah or you or your hand goes to your mouth because you go fuck or it's like jesus christ and you fall back a little bit oh and then you say something like this you go i thought i was straight but seriously, yeah. nature versus nurture. Do you find that you have a good body because of just your genetics or because, well, because of the genetics you're born with or because of your environment's shaping of you in the entertainment industry as a, as a fighter? You're not going to, you're not going to be, you're never going to be a pro athlete without certain God given attributes. You're just not, but you can definitely with what you're, what you're working with, you can get really good at communicating with your body. If you if you practice it enough, you can get a black belt. You can be a marginal athlete and get a black belt in jujitsu and choke out ninety percent of the population. Is that where Same. you're at? Same. Are you no. black belt? No, I'm, I'm black belt in taekwondo and boxing, but I'm a, I'm a Hanzo blue belt in jujitsu. Han what's Hanzo blue belt? Hanzo Gracie, the great Hanzo Gracie, one of my favorite people on the planet. Oh, yeah. yeah. Is he the great of the Gracie family? I know I've heard a yeah, lot about yeah. the Gracie. He's like brilliant he's just a brilliant human being he's like a he's a he's a brilliant person and a beautiful human being dude I love him. so was your dad uh, in the cia <laughs> my dad gotta... worked for my dad w was as a, as a was a marine and a real patriot and I'm, i i believe he probably did work for them but it's not what you think it's probably more like hey i'm in it's the 70s it's the 80s there's the cold war and i'm gonna help I'm going to help. Um, I'm going to. I'm going to be an asset to the CIA, where I I invite somebody over for dinner and pick his brain uh, about what he's doing, and maybe get him to give us uh, or give somebody I am connected with information. Um, you know, it's that kind of stuff. It's, the, the CIA is mostly information gathering. So is that why we, you would we just have a very robust? It seems we have a very robust assassination program now 
since 9-11, and the CIA has become a paramilitary organization. There is a wing of it that is that way. That's different. That's Those are ex-SEAL team Delta guys. Those, those guys are the, the, the cool stuff when we think of the CIA. You know, the stuff's like, oh, the, those, those, are, those guys are, that's a very different thing. Very but your dad, your dad was more on information. And then would you like sit at the table with them and listen and talk about all sorts of crazy shit growing up? Yeah, you, 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 you better have had a command of history if you were in my house. You better have understood the difference between, you know, the systems of government and why the U.S. Constitution was the greatest, the greatest political document. It, it, it solved the political problem. You had to understand why people like John James and James Madison and Thomas Jefferson and Alexander Hamilton, why these men were giants and why all of us owe them a debt of gratitude, all of us. What, and by what? the way, and not to mention English common law, there were certain things that you had to know. Like Where what? do you come from? Where do you come from? And what do you benefit from? The people and the ideas that all of us benefit from every single day. The reason I can speak my mind, the reason I can, I can criticize my governor, my ruler, without worrying about somebody knocking on my door and taking me off and shooting me somewhere, which is what all of history has been until the United States happened. Um, that is that that had to be earned. That had to be argued for. It had to be written down. It had to be put into form. And and um, and that is something called checks and balances, a bicameral legislature. You want government to run uh clunkily you don't want smooth government you want infighting infighting keeps government slow clunky you don't want power to sit in one group's hands james madison when he wrote the federalist papers was obsessed with faction he knew that people get into factions and one faction gets more powerful than all the other factions and it gobbles up all the other factions so how do you keep how do you keep fa one faction from gaining control? How do you keep one very charismatic leader from annexing the army? How do you do that? These, these, these questions had to be answered, and they were answered. But these by, dudes, by these guys didn't have electricity yet. Not, I don't think they had it yet. Ben Franklin they kind of was dead. They so they didn't, have no. they didn't have phones. They didn't understand mass formation in a way that we have now with internet and big business, the way that BlackRock's able to consolidate wealth and buy corporate. Like, I, I, I wonder if government needs to be more smooth now and smash up these mon these monarchies, these, these, these monopolies. Uh, it's a good, it's a good question. Ian. It's a good question. Um, because, but, but the problem you see is that, government is there there is lateral cooperation on a scale i don't think we've ever seen between government and corporate america um you know your 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 interests when in Hol in washington your interests are not important to them your interests in washington are um are so are so fifth tier what what's going on on the floor of the house is probably something like debating what kind of a swipe fee uh bank of america should be allowed to charge its customers you know and then what the rest of the decisions are being made in in davos in the boardrooms in the corporate i don't know about davos i think davos is a way for the elite to get together and just kind of be like hey look mm -hmm, you know um but I, but but again, again, yes, you're right. The, the philosopher kings want to rule everything. That's always been the case. With like uh, social media, I'm like, how do you break up Google? And I'm like, well, you look at what they did to Rockefeller with Standard Oil. They broke it up into six oil companies, and then Rockefeller had stock in all six of them. He maintained his hegemony. He he essentially got even more powerful after that. We're like, we can never let the government fuck us like that again. Let's build the Federal Reserve. Let's take control of the system. So they were like, no more of these monopoly breaking up, no more of these antitrust. But now we got big tech. You can't break it up into six companies. If you broke up Facebook into WhatsApp, Facebook Prime, Facebook Messenger, Zuckerberg's still going to have all that code. He's going to be just as powerful. So my idea is the way you break up these corporate monopolies, these tech monopolies, is by freeing their software code by giving the code to the masses so that people can create their own version of Facebook to compete. Facebook will still have its market. It's, I, I can't think of another way to, 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 to stump. The... I like your idea of com competition. I think you create competition. I think, 
I think what happens is the world gets very wary of something like Google that seems to be so big, so faceless, so powerful. And and they are the they, you know, they are the tree of knowledge. We already bit the apple. And, you know, um, I think all of us know that there's something nefarious about any power resting in any one group's hands because they're a small group and they can't they inevitably will start to tell you how to speak they will inevitably try to impose their idea of truth on all of us they inevitably will be arrogant enough to think that they can restructure society in their own image and you better be careful of that so yes i think um i i don't care that they say do no evil and all that i i don't i think they're too big and I think it's it's maybe up to the consumer to understand and educate themselves on why it's dangerous. When you like look back at history, because you're pretty much a history guy, I think that's one of your specialties is like study of history in general. Maybe. Yeah. That do you see this pattern that we're experiencing now with corporate collusion and consolidation in the past in maybe a different form? I know I corporate. Do. I do. I'll give you an example. It's not so much collusion. Yes, yes. You know, the 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 um, old Europe had a lot of secret alliances, and before you know it, you know, you'd be off to war, and you'd be like, "Who's on our side?" Because the the aristocrats would get together in a room and be the Austro-Hungarian Empire, and they would make a deal with some of them, the Ottomans or whatever it might be. Um, but 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 now, of course, we have these messy democracies. What I think is a larger a larger uh, threat and something that we are seeing once again is that we are not oriented, none of us are oriented around or towards a singular truth. And what I mean by that is this, look, um, if you and I start having an argument, Ian, and I, and I quote CNN or CN, uh, CNSBC or whatever, any of these things, or I quote Time Magazine, or I quote you know the New York Times, you're going to you're going to cut me off immediately and say, first of all, I don't trust that source. So kiss my ass. That's new in my lifetime. And so let me let me hearken back. When Nietzsche said God is dead, he said it. And what he was what he was responding to was what he was responding to the end of the Enlightenment, the 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 fact that we now had scientific advancements that threw everything we thought we knew about truth in the air. It used to be the two authorities were what? The Bible and Aristotle. And along comes Einstein and he says, oh, by the way, time, it's relative. It's relative. That God doesn't have a big stopwatch in the sign. If I'm in the sky, if I'm going at the speed of light, you're gonna, time will stand still for you. What? What? Along comes Freud, who says there's the subconscious, there's the unconscious, there is the conscious and the subconscious. And and oh, by the way, that also means you want to have sex with your mother. It's called the edible complex. What? And oh, by the way, there's something called sexual selection. And so um, it's all about whether or not you're going to give me better kids. How broad are your shoulders? How square and symmetrical is your face? And uh, how well can you protect me? Oh, and by the way, there's also something called evolution, which means that um, there's a design without a designer. So there is no God, okay? So that's, that's, that's Darwin. That was Darwin. So you've got Freud, you've got Darwin, you've got Einstein, and then you've got, you've got people who are able to predict the movement of the planets, tell you, like Haley, when a comet was going to shoot across the sky. Look up, I know when it is. It's no longer about God. I can figure out all the secrets of the universe using math. I have harnessed the electromagnetic field. I can send, I can send information via Morse code over copper wire for the first time. You didn't need a boat, you didn't need your feet, you didn't need a horse, and you didn't need uh, uh, anything else to get a message to somebody. You could do it instantaneously almost. All of these things threw into question what the truth was. That's why Dali was painting melting clocks, because time can bend. 
It's why Stravinsky's music, listen to it. It had no form. It was ching, ching, ding, 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 ding. It was crazy. It's why, it's why you had the Cubist era of Picasso painting deconstructed women because nothing made sense anymore. Everything was fair game. And what Nietzsche said then is he said, God is dead, the Christian God is dead. So Europe's, Europe's mind was no longer singularly focused. You, the European mind was now, because God was no longer in the picture and churches were being emptied, man was gonna invent his own religions. He was gonna invent his own truth without God, without a transcendent truth that stood apart from humanity. See then the isms that were invented, communism, socialism, capitalism, humanism, individualism, name it. And that is what turned Europe into a slaughterhouse. That is what, that's why World War I and World War II happened, because everybody was fighting for their version of truth, i.e. their version of God. And it was man-made God. When you were a communist, they had communist, what that you could, basically the equivalent of priests that would walk around the Soviet army and make and quiz the soldiers on the communist manifesto. It was the Bible. Religion was outlawed. It was quote unquote what? The opium of the masses. It was for the old. It was for the ancients. It was superstition. We now have science. And what was the what was the whole thing about it? Human beings could perfect humanity. We can create utopia here on earth. Now, what that means is we got to get rid of some of the people who are in the way because they're already corrupted. We have to have re-education camps. We have to have concentration camps. We have to have extermination camps because those people are the problem and they're beyond redemption. We've got to what? Purify humanity. This is what was going on. This is the sick, twisted ideology of communism, of fascism, of eugenics that, that have found its soil in the American universities here in this country. Eugenics. We can perfect the race through selective breeding. That is what Nietzsche was talking about when he said God is dead. That's why he said it with lament in his voice. He didn't say it you know, with jubilation. He didn't say it as a celebration. He said, we are in deep shit. And I'm worried that today, in 2024, we are no longer uh, agreeing on what the truth is and we're inventing our own gods. Like what? Like an AI brain that is going to render humanity useless. We don't need humans. What? We got machines, bro. We got the machines, and that might be the apocalypse. That might be revelation, man. It might. It might be the end. If we let AI get that crazy, we're fucked. I, I do think revelation is like the great revealment. The apocalypse is about revealing things. And I wonder if people go into the neural net, if it's going to create like a Borg where we all see each other's thoughts and everything is revealed, and that was the apocalypse. I think so. That sounds, that sounds about right if we don't figure out what to do with this this godlike technology like they're doing crispr they're doing gene editing and babies at least in china i think it's been reported they're making people are probably going to not have to breathe for 10 minutes at a time they'll be able to swim you know yeah, navy that's seals and that's the good side the bad side is when you use crispr to to engineer the smallpox vaccine and make it 1000 times more lethal and 1000 times more contagious yeah i wonder if the people if they're building viruses and they're like you know what only the strong survive we'll have a better race after we we wipe out all the weak ones it's that would certainly be very human it'd be certainly it'd be it'd be on par with the arrogance of humanity but you know what but so like before the isms in the 1900s like before this god is dead this revolution in the i don't know if it was science or it's just the natural evolution of perception but like was it not a slaughterhouse was europe not as much of a slaughterhouse just undocumented i think that's a great question and i think it was but for different reasons it was so for territory you know, it was for hegemony. It was, um, and, and remember that before World War I, we didn't have that technology. We didn't have the industrial technology to kill that many people that quickly. We didn't have sarin gas, mustard gas. We didn't have the machine gun. We didn't have incendiary bombs. We didn't have flight. We didn't have all these things. <laughs> so that was the difference. Dude, bombs are crazy bombs in general that the amount yeah. of like collateral damage that a bomb it, it, what a that 
I mean, I, throwing cannonballs was bomb-ish because it would hit things and make it, it go flying out. But the actual explosive force. Oh, yeah. And when you talk about collateral damage, we, we wiped out ISIS with a lot of bombs. Did a great job. But, you know, in Mosul, when, when, the, when the Americans were bombing uh, uh, Mosul to try to get at uh, um, ISIS, um, we killed probably, this is according to some stats, probably seven civilians to every one militant. Oh my God. Yeah, dude. Yeah. So where are you like on the white pill, black pill scale these days? Um, I'm a conservative. I mean, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm way more of a libertarian. I'm, I'm way more in the, in favor of things like free speech, second amendment, uh, the constitution being a fixed document, not a living document that can be interpreted and changed constantly. Um, so I, I am probably a lot more like Tim Pool, or probably like yourself in, in that in that sense. Um, I'm also socially liberal. Um, I have my I have my issues with the gender ideology movement. I think that's uh, I don't I, I have a big problem with that. I don't believe I don't believe that it's sincere. Um, but of overall, um, I'm also I'm also a lot more traditional. I, I do I believe in gay marriage? Sure. You want to talk about abortion? God, that's sticky. But but I'm 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 also believe in a, a, a transcendent truth. I believe in a higher truth. I believe I believe in the higher good, and I believe in the higher truth. I believe I believe in beauty. I believe in truth, and I believe in good. And I believe that we should be moving in that direction. And I think that we're sinners and saints. It's my my last my my special before man tears was, tears was called complicated apes, and it was called complicated apes because I believe we're sinners, saints, and everything in between. And your job is to move in the direction of your best self, the angels of your best nature, not the angels of your base nature. So I'm, I'm always torn about that. And I think we're good, like generally consciously good. But then when people get hungry, you talk about the base nature of, of the hominid of the animal. Uh, I think we forget that we're sentient maybe even when the stomach takes over. And I've been fortunate to never be in a, be in a starvation position. You're, you're I, right. I'm, right. Miss a meal and a night of sleep. Come talk to me. Tell me how you feel about your fellow man. So, like, what do you think that it's in? Like, where is where are you at with your your visions of the future right now? Do you think about the future? Do you stay in the present? I have a very hard time staying in the present, and I'm, I'm always thinking about the future. And I don't I don't see uh, sunny skies. I, I I'm an optimist, but I'm very worried. I'm very worried. I'm terrified of, of AI. I'm terrified of AI making AI. I'm terrified of the fact that a very small group of people in labs, I don't know, I don't know where these AI labs are, um, but I'm terrified of these, these AI brains that they're putting $10 billion in. I'm terrified of sentient AI. I'm terrified of the fact that it takes a very little money for a country like China or Russia to steal the, the, the technology that goes into these AI brains. And then we're we're in a race to the bottom. Um, so yeah, I, I don't know. What is it and about Adam, the AI? What's, I'm sorry. What what is it about the AI that sets you off? That it it's able to um, it's able to it it might it might behave in its own interest. It might um, first of all, never mind the dis the job disruption that will happen overnight. Um, and, uh, but, but more, more that I don't know what to expect. I think it's, it's ability to create destruction when AI falls in the wrong hands, when you can take a picture of your garage and it will tell you with all the ingredients in your garage very quickly, how to make uh, nerve gas or, or something even worse. That is something that's a, that's a real possibility. So. Um, the technology is getting cheaper, more widespread, and, and it can fall in the wrong hands. A miniaturized yeah. nuclear weapon, et cetera. That's what I think a lot about, like, freedom. I'm like, oh, yeah, freedom of information, freedom of, of uh, opportunity, freedom of electricity even, like zero-point energy. What if every human had unlimited power? And then I'm like, well, hold on. I think this, this probably this conversation has gone through a lot of, a lot of leaders' heads over the, the millennia. You give every monkey a nuclear bomb, one of those dudes is going to drop one on the ground on accident. And there we go. So That's is, right. it, is it the same with AI? 
like you yeah, consider that yeah, a nuclear a, bomb of the mind or something? You have a government there for a reason, right? There's a there's a reason you and I can't go buy a rocket launcher. They're, 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 you do need some government. To, to, you've got you can't you have to have a governor on this insanity. You, you, people in power have got to wake up to the fact that they, they don't talk to me about it. Listen to Rogan's podcast with Tristan Harrison and um, Ezra Raskin. It scared the shit out of me, man. These guys the, know what they're talking about. Who are those they're, guys? They were forefront of this persuasion technology they're the ones who worked at facebook they're the ones who came up with infinite scrolling you know you can't stop scrolling yeah, as a rascal yeah. came up with that idea yeah that's it, arguably it, unethical but he didn't mean to be unethical he was trying to solve another problem that was the that was the side effect what was the other and problem was, retention yeah. problem i should talk to him about yeah it. yeah i don't know it's it's uh it, but but just listening to those experts and i was like oh my god you know so, I gotta watch it. Is that a recent episode they did? Yeah, yeah. Please watch it. It's it's it's, fun. it's almost hard to think about anything else. Yeah, we were. We're all I looking at, over here. We're all looking over here, and then this thing's coming. A we were, I worked at Minds Minds dot com. Bill Ottman, yeah. he and I co founded yeah. that company. So for like a decade, I, we were sit behind the scenes and be like, "How addictive do we want to make this technology?" This is like an ethics question. Eighty six percent addictive. Like I, the whole like pull it down and then it refreshes is like, "Ding! I got three cherries." <laughs> Yay! I got three notifications, and it's like gambling, gambling, gambling. Yeah, I get dude. a new notification. Well, not only that, but if you want to make a lot of money, just turn yourself into a dopamine hit. You know, dude. and 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 uh, and just keep turning yourself. But you got to keep turning yourself into a dopamine hit. You got to keep doing it, and you'll make a lot of money. You'll certainly be very popular. But you got to keep doing it because you're addicted. To dopamine. Even like we're all even we're all on drugs. Your children, me, all of us, we're all on drugs. You, we, we did we, again. We can't keep all, all of our children, all of our children. And I think it's significant and symbolic that it's the Apple phone with a bite taken out of it. There's before Apple and there's after Apple. Yo, that and that's like from the Bible, the app, the the tree of knowledge. Is that what it is of good yes, and evil? Yeah. That, tree of knowledge. You mean, you mean Google? Yes. Like eat and let the me ask you a question. Does information make you more wise? Is nonfiction the same thing as truth? I don't think so. But I'm writing about this all now. This is what I'm trying to put on stage. Oh, interesting. Yeah, knowledge and wisdom are not the same. Information and data and your ability to recollect that is intelligence, maybe. Whereas wisdom oh, is sure. your ability to... It, it, but intelligence and education is just the fact that you've immersed yourself in, in the thoughts and writings of people that came before you. It's just the knowledge that came before you. Now you wanna steep yourself in the best that's been thought and said, and that's how you learn the difference between a good idea and a bad idea, maybe. That's what education's about. You learn how to think, not what to think, etc. yes. But- um, you, Do you feel like you've gained <laughs> wisdom over the years? Yeah, I'm old, I'm 56. How did you how did you gain the wisdom? What were your main methodologies? I've never stopped reading. I've never stopped reading the right things. I, I take, there's a there's something called the teaching company where I take classes from, from thoughtful historians. I learn the history of science. I, 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 there, I listen to the great ideas of philosophy. I want to know what Nietzsche's contribution was to the world of thought, uh, John Locke's contribution, about Hobbes' contribution, Immanuel Kant's contribution, Descartes' contribution, Kierkegaard. You can keep going down the list. I want to know the difference between philosophy and religion. I want to know the difference between reason and faith. You need to know these things and keep asking questions. Take nothing for granted. Question everything. Always be thinking. Take time to reflect on what you've read. But I've been doing that for a long. I'm an old man. Do you said the difference between religion and philosophy. Do you think that religion? I personally think that, at least at face value, religion is a type of philosophy. It depends. It it, it, it depends. Um, you you have the Vedas. You have the Vedanta, which is the Hindu. You know where Buddhism comes from. That is more of a philosophy. It's more. In fact, of a step-by-step -step scientific approach to <laughs> something like realization, um, but uh, I, I do think the Abrahamic religions, Islam and Judaism and Christianity, tend to be a little bit more um, doctrinal. Um, the, this is, these are the commandments. Uh, we have a bunch of metaphor and story for why you shouldn't stray from the commandments. Uh, don't wash, worship false idols. Hold uh, a transcendent undescribable, uh, undefinable truth 
uh, to be the highest regard. It is. It, it supersedes your appetites, status, power, and all the other things that draw you in one direction or another. I think those are those faith. Faith is beautiful because it, it reminds you that you are more than your body. You are more than your emotions. Don't live your life only only for emotional, intellectual, and physical satisfaction. There is something more. It's something like like if you talk to a Christian or um, it's your soul, if you talk to a Hindu, it's Atman, it's the universal self. It is, it is the witness to a Buddhist, the witness who can sit back and watch even your own mind and even your own emotions and your own body go through anything, including your own self-immolation. That's what the monks who set themselves on fire and they don't move, they just die, they don't even make a peep. Those are those are the bodhisattvas. Those are the ones that have been able to step outside their body, even their own mind, and watch their own death. Why? Holy sh Why do they do oh. that? Why do they light themselves? So it's it because they realize that 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 the their their the self is an illusion. That they are not their body. They're not their emotions, and they're not their mind. That they are something outside of that that can actually observe all three as objects. The subject is the Atman. The subject is the universal self. The subject is the, the Christian, universal self. The, the Christian mystics talked about that the same way. When they would be burnt at the stake or tortured or whatever, um, uh, Aquinas, all of them talked about, uh, about sort of the, once they, they reached this form of enlightenment, this notion that I love God, um, and that everything was beautiful, that everything was God. When you're like perceiving your own consciousness i guess mm -hmm. do you like take psychedelics and then astral project or do you meditate and then i've done all that i, I i've done the psychedelics and i learned uh, and i've done too many psychedelics and uh i learned not to take so many psychedelics that's what i learned i'm too old i'm too old to be uh seduced by the power of psychedelics i think psych psychedelics are great but i i tend to get my uh i find more satisfaction and illumination in reading and taking my time uh, and being tutored about and uh, the, the Old Testament, the New Testament, uh, the Vedanta, um, uh, you know, the Quran. I, I, the, the, I, I want to know from scholars who live it and who study it. I want to know. I want I want them to teach me the value. One, one thing I don't get about the Old Testament into the New Testament is the second commandment is no worship, no false idols. This is God's will. But then they come it's along. The number, one, the number one rule, in my opinion, in, in the Old Testament. Literally. Yeah. So like money, obviously, that's like, don't worship it. Use it, I guess. But don't worship the stuff. Even your but, own, even your own knowledge, even your own ability to get out of a problem, even your own ability to pretend to be you think you're non you're unbiased in your decision making, etc. Uh, be wary of that. Um, what, what what gets me, what really gills my grinds is the Jesus is like the worship of a man. That's a yeah. false idol, in my opinion. You don't worship that's, man. You worship that's God. Certainly, that's certainly how the Jews and the, the Muslims feel about it. So you, And you, same yeah. with Muhammad. So, like, how do the Muslims, how can they argue that Muhammad's not a false idol? It's a man. He's a dude. No, because He's Muhammad, Muhammad, God. Muhammad never claimed to be God. Muhammad was a prophet. So Muhammad only said that, that I believe the archangel Gabriel revealed the sunnah, the sutras, to, to Muhammad. He was an illiterate... Um, uh, he was an illiterate shepherd, and he wrote the Quran, right? And he said he had revelations. I think it took him seven years. And he was in a cave. He was alone, probably doing something like meditation. It's the same thing. And something happened to him where he said, I'm going to unite the tribes of Arabia. And, um, and he, uh, basically, he basically, he had a revelation. So, so the Muslims would tell you that, that Muhammad was not god he never claimed to be god that would be heresy but he was the last prophet the last prophet to talk about god they mentioned jesus in the bible they the the, the i mean i'm sorry the quran the quran the quran will tell you the, they they'll, they they uphold many of the stories of the old testament the only difference in the old, in in the quran and the old testament is when isaac when when abraham was commanded by god to sacrifice his only son isaac the Muslims will say it wasn't Isaac; it was Ishmael. Ishmael was uh, was was Abraham's first son that he had with uh, 
I think Raghab or whatever, his, uh, the housemaid, because Sarah was barren and she was old. And Sarah said, go into our housemaid and, and have a son. And that was Ishmael. And Ishmael was, uh, and then when Sarah got pregnant with Isaac, uh, Sarah banished the maid and Ishmael. And God said to Ishmael and, and his maid, Raghab, I think her name was, he said, uh, you will have, you will form a great nation. And Ishmael formed the Arabs and Isaac form, gave, Isaac was the father of the Jews. So you see Abraham, that's why they call it the Abrahamic religion. Abraham was the father to Isaac and Ishmael. When Ishmael was kicked out of the house when he was 13 with his mother, God said to, to his mother, Ishmael will form a, a, his own nation of people. And those were the Arabs. But Isaac was the father of the Jews. So you see, they come from the same family. They come from the same father, but different mothers, the Arabs and the Jews. Abraham's okay. like, he's my dude. Like that dude. <laughs> Do you talk to God? No. I, st I figured out how. I, I started um, making internet videos in 2006, and I was like, all right, I'm going to tell all my past secrets. All Great. the things, things would like pop in my head, like, and I would get distracted. So I just started telling the camera and uploading it on the internet. It was like confession. I didn't know what I was doing at the time. I just felt right. Like I had to be honest. And they stopped popping in my head and I gained control of my thoughts. I can think any word I want now. And I'll look at someone in the eyes and either think words at them instead of speak like, good to see you. But now yeah. then I also think it to God and it responds you it will it'll either respond in words or in imagery like you'll be like what do i do god you'll think it and it will show you doing something like you'll see a vision of you digging a hole or like you know folding the laundry or whatever and like you know before you even finish asking the question it will respond because it knows what you're going to ask that's pretty cool i like it i like that you talk to god that way all right i'll keep yeah. that in mind and you can pray to other visages of god so like you can pray to jesus which is like god in jesus's form or you can pray to your mother you can picture her and she'll give you her version of god's wisdom or what you think her version would be and but i try to only pray to god is like the purity form because when you can pray to other people you get you, your perceived bias yeah that's true that's a, that's a, that's actually a consideration do i pray to the father or do i pray, pray to the son you know do i pray to the god who tells you to turn the other cheek and love your enemies or do i pray to the god who tells you to walk a straight line and and uh, follow the commandments, you know. It's true. I, I, yeah, the God is the Father. I think is is um, patriarchy psyop. They said God was a man. Well, I don't know. Yeah, I don't think they say. Well, see, they don't say that God's necessarily a man. He's referred to as He, but really, you would never assign anything to God. Not a sex. What, not a form. Not a name. What That's why you, Yahweh. Yahweh is not when you don't. You don't. You'll never hear a rabbi say Yahweh. It would be to, uh, to the, 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 the Muslims are the same way. Allah, you know, it's true, but you don't want to say, you never want to draw an image of God. Why? Because it, it suggests that you as a human being can put a boundary around God, that you can define God and you can't. Because that's very, very important. I think Dude. it's the galactic core, but it might just be like energy density, like, and it's all over the the universe. <laughs> like when you look at Nassim Harriman's Schwarzschild proton He's talking about every proton. He wrote this paper and did the math that every proton's two protons revolving around each other at the speed of light, depositing information into the vacuum and then bringing it back to the the third dimension at, at rapidly. But you, we just see one proton, and that like everything in the universe is equal density. So I picture all these subatomic spins, you know, these fermions and these bosons, like trillions and quadrillions of subatomic spin all throughout me and around me and like that's god that's one way of looking at it i feel like i'm on mushrooms as you talk i literally feel like we're we're both on mushrooms yeah because the psilocybin's still in you from the last time but it's just reactivated with dmt it. yes me too man um, yep yeah oh, what you saying? i was gonna say i've got to, i've got to run I gotta go yeah that's what i i was gonna say that too it's 407 dude what a night i had a great time with you man i appreciate you, you. let's do it again dog uh, you're, yeah, anytime, dude. Are you gonna come? Are you gonna be in LA anytime? I don't know, but let's make it happen. Let's do something. Anytime you're you're uh, let, let's grab a meal. Come on, man. Call me uh, when are, you're there. Okay. Tell Austin. Tim Pool. Tell Pool. I, I I know I've been invited to come do the show. I just I, you know to fly to Maryland. I've just been so busy. But tell him I love him. I think he's a, I'm a huge fan of him. I think he's important. Oh. And uh, and uh, just make sure he knows I'm not I'm not you know I really appreciate those invites. I just, That's what I'm talking about. I'll let him know. And we do the culture war on Friday. You could come in for maybe do a Friday show. That'd be fun. I'd love it. 
I'd love it. Um, in the meantime, if you guys are in Arizona, I'm at the Desert Ridge Improv tonight. The first show sold out, but we have, I think, some tickets for the second show, and there are tickets for the Sunday show. And uh, it should be fun. Where's that at? At the Desert Ridge Improv in Phoenix, Arizona. Come get Oh, I some. like it. And Mines yeah. wants you to do, we're doing another event in August, in April in I love Austin. Bill. I love you, so let me know. I'm, I'm there. Dude, Sorry. that'd be fun as fuck. All right, Brian. Everyone, Brian Callen, ladies and gentlemen, subscribe, like the video, share it with everybody, and uh, we'll be seeing y'all later. Thanks, guys. Peace. I'm going to end the stream.